Hello, my name is Gabriel, and today I will be doing a SLAM lesson explaining various cells in the body, uh, their purposes, how they get energy, and uh, just some general facts about them. So, the first cell, and the most basic one, is the red blood cells. Their main objective is to supply our body with oxygen and to transport oxygen throughout our body so that we have energy to function. Uh, like almost every other cell, they gain energy by absorbing sugars uh, from the bloodstream or other sources of energy that are given to them. And they, these sources are processed in mitochondria. And these are the little beans over here that you can see. These provide the cells with their energy in order to undergo their functions um, and to do various chemical reactions. Um, like most cells, they have a nucleus which contains their genetic information. This allows them to... Um, uh, multiply so that we have enough uh, cells because obviously cells do die so we need them to keep reproducing and next we also have ribosomes you can't see them but really they're these tiny little um like small small spheres they just produce protein for our cells but this is an, an, a very important uh, crucial component in um really just any function uh, in in many chemical reactions and these ribosomes uh, supply our cells with this um, they are found in this, it's kind of like a maze, it's um, just some layers of tissue surrounding the, the cell. They're found in here. Everything else inside of the cell is cytoplasm. It's just kind of like a jelly, and inside of it you just have mitochondria, ribosomes, um, and these are the most important facts. Next we have white blood cells. Now, white blood cells um, are part of the immune system. They help our body uh, defend us against whatever it may be against um, viruses or any anything our body considers to be a threat. Now, there are many different types of white blood cells, and each of these is kind of specialized for a different defense. For example, we have um, white blood cells for um, fungi, for parasites, for bacteria. Whatever it is, there's a blood cell for it, and each of these is a little bit di uh, different, so if I, it's, it's a bit hard to go into detail over this. Now, the main thing uh, to note about this is that our body produces more white blood cells in accordance or in whenever the demand is needed, more are made. So, for example, if we needed, if we, <laughs> I don't know, got sick, we got the common cold or something, or some kind of sickness, our body would begin to produce more white blood cells to help us combat that illness. Um, now something interesting doctors can do is that they can take the count of specific white blood cells in our blood, and if it's higher than normal, then they'll know something's up. Either it's our body doing an incorrect response or we're sick. So this is one way doctors can actually check for, um, diseases. And now the way white blood cells protect us is that they produce antibodies, which help destroy the, um, bacteria or the, the threat, or they can just envelop the threat and essentially they'll set, they'll stop the threat from, um, affecting our body too much. Um, now, these are produced just like red blood cells from stem cells, which is the next slide. And um, the, uh, the other thing is that just like red blood cells, they have a nucleus and they gain energy from the bloodstream by absorbing glucose or any other materials and produce it themselves. So somewhat similar to red, to red blood cells. Um, next, we have stem cells. So stem cells are some of the are, are very old and are very old type of cell. They're some of the first that are produced in our body, and they provide our body with the stable supply of more um, types of cells. Now, whenever a stem, now the way these reproduce is that when they do reproduce, they will do three types of of different reproductions. They'll either make two copies, two more stem cells. They'll just split apart and make two identical copies, or they will break apart and create two completely different copies or they will create one version of themselves and one um a new type of cell um and as they stay inside these are they're located inside of our bone marrow and essentially stem cells will um split apart and create new platelets white blood cells or red blood cells and supply our body with these cells as needed um and then they split up in this specific way by creating a copy of themselves and the new cell um, and by doing this, they're able to maintain their quantity. For example, if they split up and make a lot of white blood cells really quickly, very fast, then the amount of, of stem cells will go down. So then they're going to start 
to produce um, only duplicates of themselves. Or if there's only a small amount needed, then they'll create a duplicate of themselves and one red blood cell maintaining the amount inside of the bone while still producing new cells for our body. Next up is platelets. Platelets. Um, they are only found in mammals and they're produced from the stem cells, like I said before. And essentially what these do is their main function is to stop um, injuries within us. If, if our skin gets cut or we get exposed, um, or our veins get exposed, for example, they will essentially start to stick to each other and to cells, as you can see in this somewhat chaotic picture, um, creating kind of a temporary tissue or layer over the exposure. The, they just create blood clots and they heal clots in, uh, cuts in our skin. And there is a slight negative connotation to blood clots. I'm sure you've heard of it used before. Um, this is when platelets start to go out of control and they actually start to bind uncontrollably causing blockages in our um, veins. And that's obviously terrible because it can stop us from getting the oxygen we need or transporting resources. However, for the most part, they're mainly used just to heal up cuts in our body. Um, and these are actually quite specific to mammals. Platelets are only found in mammals, so that is quite interesting. Um, platelets only have a nucleus, I believe, and cytoplasm. Other than that, there's they're just kind of like small globules. They just float around and um, attach when needed. Now, the final type of cell in our body are fat, mushroom, muscle, <laughs> and uh, skin cells. And essentially, all of these uh, art cells are, well, for the, at least fat and skin cells are somewhat similar. They are very tightly packed, um, almost identical cells who have one main purpose and do not do too much. Skin cells are just incredibly tightly packed. They're they have uh, tougher walls, and they form. There's multiple layers of different types of skin cells stacked on top of each other to form our skin. And in order to get energy and to keep them healthy, they diffuse. Um, they diffuse. Um, they gain their nu nutrition. It diffuses from beneath them through the layers of the skin in order to um, gain energy. So this would go from taking energy from our blood, um, and this goes out to the surface. Um, next, we also have fat cells. Now, fat cells are essentially, um, fat cells um, grow the more fat we have. These are cells that have taken fat uh, into them and have created a sort of tissue, and they're really their main purpose is just to store fat. So they really just store energy, sit in one place, and they form this, well, layer of fat. That's <laughs> that's pretty much it. They're, they're really just like storage containers. And finally, we have muscle cells. Um, Muscle cells are very interesting. As you can see this, in this picture, we have kind of like a rope here, and it splits out, and you can kind of see a cross section as more and more parts come out. And muscle cells are kind of like super, super thin strands of like, of like twine or rope or something bundled up together. Thousands, millions of them are bundled up to create really strong fibers, tendons. I'm not sure what, what the, I'm not quite sure what the word is for them, but they essentially. Um, form like kind of like ropes and they will contract to make our body move um, and that's that's more or less it the way that they get energy is that they break down ATP uh, which you might have heard is basically sugar or they break down ATP to get energy and um, they can get this ATP uh, by doing a chemical reaction they can get it from glucose or from fat the reason we uh, fat gets stored is because glucose can be broken down much more easily and can provide more ATP in a sudden burst, like you know, like a sugar rush, right? Um, which is why our body uses glucose first and stores fat later because our, it's more favorable for our muscles to break down glucose first thing. Um, and uh, that is it for this presentation. Thank you for listening.